It is an area of incredible natural beauty, sprawling across more than 2.2 million acres of temperate pine forests and volcanic plateaus. With iridescent hot springs welling up from beneath the ground, crystalline lakes fed by icy mountain streams, and plunging waterfalls flowing into dizzying canyons, nowhere else will you find such astonishing scenery gathered together in one place. Welcome to Yellowstone, the world's first national park home to a remarkable diversity of mammals, birds, and fish, and one of the world's foremost wildlife sanctuaries. With over 1,000 miles of trails stretching throughout the park, you have the opportunity to fully explore one of the world's greatest natural landscapes and discover the park's remarkable backcountry. Visiting these beautiful and challenging areas of the park requires knowledge of backcountry safety, planning for unexpected events, and being fully aware of the inherent risks of backcountry travel. There is no guarantee for your safety. But by planning ahead, you can make your trip safer and more enjoyable and minimize your impact on park resources so that future generations can continue to enjoy them as you have. As you venture throughout the park's deep pine forests and broad grasslands, you will see that some of Yellowstone's backcountry trails are marked with orange metal tags on trees or posts. Signs like these are both for your guidance and to protect these natural resources. If you happen to lose the trail, look for cut logs or markers on trees until you find the trail again. In order to prevent erosion and other harmful impacts on vegetation, please stay on the trail, hike in single file, and don't be tempted to cut corners on switchbacks. If for some reason you have to hike off trail, like these guys, that spread out to avoid trampling on rare plants. Trampling on delicate species will kill them and can lead to erosion. Hiking on resilient surfaces such as rock, snow, gravel, or dry grasses can reduce the impacts on vegetation. However, we don't recommend off-trail travel due to the increased personal risk and the potential dangers of surprising a bear or other wildlife at close range. Observing wildlife can be a great thrill when you are in the backcountry. But remember, animals in the park are not pets, they are wild, and should be treated with due caution and respect. When you're out on the trail, please refrain from feeding or harassing the wildlife, no matter how docile or cute they appear. Even normally calm animals can act unpredictably and aggressively. For your safety, you are required to stay at least 100 yards, the length of a football field, away from bears, and at least 25 yards away from all other large animals, such as deer, moose, bison, and elk. Because Yellowstone is one of the largest intact temperate ecosystems remaining on the planet, it provides the perfect habitat for some of the rarest and most exciting of animals. The park is home to both black and grizzly bears, who provide a crucial part of a healthy ecosystem as both predator and scavenger. Bears may look playful and docile, but they are wild and can be dangerous. Although most backcountry hikers will never see a bear, visitors have been injured and killed by bears in the past. Trails marked with bear frequenting area signs usually mean we've had numerous sightings or reports of bear activity in the area. Be extra vigilant in these locations, but remember, Wildlife such as bears can be anywhere at any time, so always be alert. Most bear-caused injuries happen when hikers surprise a bear. To avoid such unwelcome encounters, try to always hike in groups. More people means more eyes looking for bears, and the increased noise of a larger group may allow bears to avoid you. Solo hiking is not advised. Make noise while hiking. Clap, talk, or sing especially when encountering blind spots on the trail such as thick vegetation or cresting a hill. Try to avoid hiking at dawn, dusk, or at night. Bears are more active at these times and your visibility is greatly reduced. While on trails, look for signs of recent bear activity, such as scat or tracks. Look for overturned rocks or logs, which could indicate that a bear has recently been searching for food. Be especially aware around carcasses, 
and in transition areas between meadow and forest where bears could be nearby. Even if you do everything in your power to avoid surprising a bear, it can happen. If it does, there are a number of things that you should take into consideration. Check how far away the bear is, whether the bear is a mother with cubs or if it's feeding. Be aware of whether the bear has noticed you or if it's acting defensively. Remember, a bear's behavior is not always predictable and often depends on your reaction to the bear. The best thing you can do is to remain calm and keep the following things in mind. If the bear is at a distance from you, do not be tempted to approach it for a better look. Assess what the bear is doing, wait for the bear to move on, detour around it, or turn around and leave the area. If you encounter a bear at close range, try to appear non-threatening. Most attacks by bears are thought to be due to bears perceiving hikers as a threat, so remain calm and talk to the bear in a calm voice. Slowly back away and increase the distance between you and the bear. Never run. Bears can reach speeds of over 30 miles an hour and running may provoke the bear to chase. If you're carrying pepper spray, be prepared to use it. Even if you follow these steps, you may still aggravate a bear or the bear may charge, especially a mother with cubs or bears guarding their food. Woofing, huffing, clacking teeth, jaw popping, head down, neck stretched out, and ears laid back are all signs of a nervous, distressed bear reacting defensively. Agitated bears may charge. If a bear charges you, stand your ground. Do not run. Most bear charges are bluff charges, which means the bear will stop or veer off before reaching you. Again, try to stay calm and use your pepper spray if you have it. In the unlikely event that a bear makes contact, keep your pack on, drop to the ground, and play dead. Lay flat on your belly with your arms protecting neck and head. Remain still and stay silent to convince the bear you are no longer a threat. Wait for the bear to leave before attempting to get up. In exceptionally rare circumstances, a bear may come to view humans as prey. This is often hikers' biggest fear, but this type of encounter is extremely rare. If, and only if, you feel a bear has been following or stalking you, act firm and aggressive. Look big, yell, throw rocks or sticks, and if it attacks, fight back with any resource you have available. And use bear spray to show that you are not easy prey. While you are at the Backcountry Permit Office, review topo maps, check for potential hazards such as stream crossings, and check reports of trail conditions. Ask about bear activity and any information which might help you prepare for your trip. Always plan your itinerary with the ability of all group members in mind, and know your limitations. Be sure to pay attention to daily hiking distances and elevation changes. While in the backcountry, there is no substitute for proper planning. Even minor problems can become major ones when you're miles from help. To help make your backcountry adventure safer and more enjoyable, we suggest that you take along the following essential items. Extra food and clothing, water purification, first aid kit, rain gear, a minimum of 30 feet of rope, bags for trash, water containers, matches, and headlamp or flashlight. Before locking and leaving your car, don't forget to place the windshield tag in a visible location and put all valuables out of sight. The high mountain climate in Yellowstone can be very unpredictable. Even on days as clear as this, summer storms can occur at any time and are often accompanied by lightning. If you're caught in a storm, descend from a high ridge top to a safe location to wait it out. Cold wet weather is not uncommon here in Yellowstone, and snow may fall at any time of the year. It is very important that you stay warm and dry to prevent hypothermia, which can be life-threatening. Having adequate rain and wind gear, carrying extra clothes, and drinking plenty of fluids to stay hydrated will all help.
In addition to the possibility of wet weather, during the spring runoff, which in some places can last until late July, high volumes of water can create dangerous river and stream conditions. Crossing streams with swift currents and deep water can be dangerous. Even slow currents can be overpowering. Before you attempt to cross a river, scout for the easiest route, and don't cross if the river looks unsafe. Unbuckle the waist strap on your backpack before entering the water. Always wear shoes or sandals for stability, and link arms for added support. Yellowstone is known for its beautiful and unique thermal features. However, hiking through these areas can be very dangerous. Always stay on marked trails. Although the ground around them may seem safe, thin crusts may hide scalding mud and water underneath. People have died by falling into thermal features. While you are in the backcountry, you may encounter parties with stock. If you do, step quietly off the trail, preferably to the downhill side, and allow the stock party to pass. If you are traveling with stock, you will receive additional information from backcountry office staff. Within the park, small signs bearing the campsite number identify backcountry campsites. Upon arriving at your designated campsite, locate the food storage and preparation area and pit toilet if provided. Check your backcountry permit to make sure you're at the correct campsite and be sure to check any special restrictions for the site. Sleeping areas are not designated at backcountry campsites, but we recommend that you select an area 300 feet or more from the food storage and cooking area. Try to locate your camp upwind if possible and away from streams, lakes, rivers, and trails as these are corridors for wildlife. Remember, most bear encounters can be avoided if your party makes an effort not to surprise bears. You can also avoid bear encounters by not attracting bears to you and your camp. Bears may be attracted to products with strong odors, such as toothpaste, deodorant, or other scented items. A stronger attractant for bears is the smell of food and trash. All of Yellowstone's backcountry campsites have food poles, like the ones behind me. Preventing bears from associating people with food is critical in reducing bear-inflicted injuries. Therefore, it is very important that you hang all your food, trash, utensils, cooking gear, and all odorous items that might attract bears. Hang them at least 10 feet above the ground and about 4 feet out from the trunk or side supports. You should bring a minimum of 30 feet of rope and be prepared to hang your food via another method in case the pole is broken. You should hang your food anytime you're not using it or carrying it. Remember, never leave your food unattended, whether it's in the campsite or on the trail, even if it's in your backpack. You should prepare your food by the fire pit or designated food storage area. You can also minimize odors by not burning trash in the fire pit and disposing of wastewater well away from sleeping areas. A few campsites have food storage boxes. Keep them latched and keep them clean. Any bear entering your tent at night does not have good intentions, and if it attacks, fight back with any resource you have available. Show that you are not easy prey. Campfires are not allowed at all backcountry campsites. Check your permit and the backcountry trip planner to see if your site allows fires. If fires are allowed at your site, a fire pit will be located near the food pole. All food preparation and cooking should be done in this area in order to keep odors to a minimum. Please keep your fire small and within the fire ring. Use only down and dead wood, broken to a burnable size, wrist size, or smaller. Don't burn garbage or food scraps in the fire as their odor may act as a bear attractant. Before leaving your campsite, please remember to completely extinguish your fire. 
and if necessary, remove any trash from the cold ashes. After you have finished cooking, be sure to wash dishes on land, not in lakes and streams. Strain and broadcast wastewater well away from your sleeping area, and any food scraps should be placed in your trash. Don't throw food or trash into pit toilets. It doesn't decompose. Before leaving your campsite, be sure to check for, and pack out, all trash. Streams like this look crystal clear, but they can contain giardia, bacteria, or viruses that can cause serious intestinal problems. All water in park lakes and streams should be treated before drinking. You can treat water by boiling it, using chemical purification such as iodine tablets, or by using a water filter. While bathing, use soap sparingly or not at all, and again, do so on land. If a pit toilet is not available, bury waste in a cat hole six to eight inches deep and 200 feet away from campsites, trails, and water sources. If you use toilet paper, dispose of it in a pit toilet or pack it out. Urinate on rocks or hard surfaces so animals won't dig or eat vegetation trying to get the salts and minerals found in urine. In addition to our backcountry regulations, we would like to remind all hikers that pets, firearms, weapons, or wheeled vehicles are not allowed within the backcountry. If you or someone in your party is disabled, please discuss using wheelchairs or service animals in the backcountry with the staff at the backcountry permit office. We hope that you found the information in this film helpful. Further details can be found in this brochure, Beyond Road's End. Help us keep Yellowstone National Park the beautiful and exhilarating place that it is by treading lightly on the land and respecting all wildlife and visitors. I hope to see you here soon, exploring, enjoying, and preserving your heritage here in Yellowstone National Park. <laughs>